as we endure this time of mourning. So be with us now, gracious God. As we reflect on your word, I pray that you will speak to this your servant and speak through me. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. And amen. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From now on, yes, says the Spirit, they rest from their labors, their deeds, will follow them. Today, brothers and sisters, we are here to celebrate the life of Sister Frida Boy. We are here to give thanks to God for the impact that she has made on our life and for the contribution that she has made to each and every one of us individually and collectively. More importantly, we are here to reflect on our own lives its meaning, its purpose, in light of our own mortality. Yes, friends, whenever we are confronted with death, whenever someone who we knew died, whenever we attend a funeral, we are forced not only to think about what happened or what is happening to that person in light of eternity, but it is an opportunity for us to ask what will happen to us too when we die. And so it is not just only a time for us to reflect and to think of the life of our dear sister. It is also a time for us to reflect on our own lives as well. And to think of life itself and its meaning and purpose in light of eternity. As we do so, brothers and sisters, we ponder a number of questions. Words from Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, which says, Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. From now on, yes, says the Spirit, they rest from their labors. Their deeds will follow them. As we wrestle with these words, brothers and sisters, together, it is my hope that we will find comfort and strength in this time of loss. But more so that we will find meaning for our own lives in the here and now. Here in this time, John writes, I heard a voice saying from heaven, Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. From now on, yes, says the Spirit, they rest from their labors. Dear Jesus, follow them. Yeah, brothers and sisters, in this text, John offers a perspective on the subject of death that we will find helpful as we reflect on life and death, and more specifically, the life and death of our dear sister, sister Frida Boy. Friends, I believe that this text holds meaning for us at this time because of where it is located. This passage comes from the middle of the book of Revelation. It is the last book in the Bible. It is a book which is regarded as God's last word about the world and life. In particular, these verses fall in the middle of a big discussion about death, about judgment, and about the battle between good and evil, and the end of history. And how the Lord in the final analysis is going to be victorious even in the midst of life and life struggles and difficulty. That's what Revelation is all about. It brings to light some of the very things that are on our minds as we gather here this morning. Questions about death, and questions about eternity. How do we reflect on our own life in the midst of the struggle of life, in light of eternity? That is the question we ponder most in moments like this. 
So if we think of this question, not only in light of our dear sister who has died, but in light of our lives, I want to invite us to reflect on this particular passage. First of all, I want to say that at first glance, the passage seems to be, or the text seems to be quite puzzling. It begins with these words. Blessed are the dead. Blessed are the dead. If the word blessed sounds a bit too churchy, we can replace it with happy. With happy. Happy are those who die. Well, I can tell you, brothers and sisters, all of us, or most of us, have encountered someone who has experienced death. The death of a loved one or the death of someone who is close to us. And we have seen persons die. I have seen. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, not always is death a very happy experience for many people. The truth is, brothers and sisters, most of us associate death with parting, with absence, with mourning, with sadness, and with loss, not necessarily with happiness. Even Jesus himself, when he encountered our experience death, Jesus was moved to tears, and we are told that Jesus wept. Jesus himself calls death man's greatest enemy. But here in this text, brothers and sisters, we find a very different perspective. The writer of Revelation, John, tells us, blessed or happy are the dead. I mean, what about death that can be viewed with such pleasure? What about death that we can look at death and we can say happy are those who experience death or those who die? The next part of the text sheds light on this very issue. The blessedness or the happiness associated with death is not just for anyone or everyone who dies. The passage insists that a person's relationship with God really matters. It says, blessed are those who die in the Lord. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. Now it is a habit for many of us to cast aspiration about where a person goes when they die. Not so with me. I leave such matters to God. But what I can do is simply to point to that person's life and witness as a testimony of their own faith. And in, this, and in the case of Sister Frida Boyd, I can certainly say that she was a woman of faith. That she was a faithful person to her God, to her church, and to her family. And she even faced death with that sense of faithfulness and trust in God. I recall the last time I visited her, she was ill. And there was no sign that, you know, she was worried or anything like that. Although she seems to be having a minor stroke at that time, she was very calm, very connected and very quiet. She was not fearful or nervous. And what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is that the way that she approached sickness and death is a testimony about her faith in God. Because she was not fearful about death. Because at any time, because of her relationship with God, she was ready to meet her maker. In her life and in her death, she exemplified what, what Paul meant when Paul wrote. For me, living in his Christ and dying is he. Brothers and sisters, I ask the question again. What makes the death of those who die in the Lord blessed? Or special or even happy? These verses goes on to give us two reasons. It says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on, yes, says the Spirit. They rest from their labors and their deeds will follow them. Here, John gives us one of the reasons why the saints of God finds happiness in them. First, he says, because it is a rest 
from their labors. It is a rest from their labor. The word rest really means relief or cease from something. It is the same word that we find in Matthew chapter 11 verse 20 when it says, Come unto me all ye that are laboring and are filled with heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I mean the term for labor on the other hand is associated with work. It refers to someone's wearisome toil, or the struggles of life, or the kind of activities that someone has been going through in life. And it gives us the sense that those activities or life at that time was wearisome or burdensome. So, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, the picture that John paints of death, or the death of the saints, is a state in which the saints of God are invited into the rest of God, following a period of faithful witness under the most challenging circumstances. It is an image in which the struggles and labor associated with worry and fear and sickness and pain are over. John builds on this image in Revelation 21 where he depicts the new Jerusalem as a state where death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be vanquished, he says. And he crowns it off with the words of assurance from God when he became place. To the thirsty, I will give a gift from the spring of the water of life. To those who conquer, they will inherit these things. And I will be their God, and they will be my, my people. It is a picture of rest, similar to the picture that is painted in Psalm 23 when the psalmist says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yes, friends, that is why death of the faithful is always a blessing. Because it is an opportunity to enter into God's place of rest. Sister Frida has lived a good life. She has labored faithfully and she has served well. Now, God has, she has accepted God's invitation into God's place of rest. Which is a place where her sorrows and pain and difficulties are going to be terminated. The Apostle John writes near the end of his life, he writes, For I am being poured out like a libation, a drink offering, and my departure has come. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my race. I have kept the faith. Now there is stored up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Lord, judge will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearing. To the children and grandchildren and the wife, the family of Sister Frida Boyd, death will no doubt bring sadness and pain to you. And there is nothing that any one of us can say or do that is going to change that. But what we can do is to encourage you to find comfort in the assurance that Sister Frida is at a place of rest. And the poem that I think someone shared a few moments ago is helpful in a period like this. It says, God looked down from his garden and he found an empty he then looked, he, he looked down upon earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and he lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful because God always takes the best. Brothers and sisters, God has taken our dear sister to a place of rest, to a place where there is no more sorrow or pain. A place where the struggles of life 
are over. A place in which she can find comfort in God's presence and peace in all that God offers. It is going to be a sad moment for us. But what is death for us is really for God. She is our Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, has called our dear sister. And it is God's wisdom to know when to act in cases like these. And so we trust God, knowing that God knows what is best for each and every one of us. And every time. Because He promises never to give us more than we can give us. And perhaps, brothers and sisters, God sees that our sister, our son and our sister, had reached our time. He had made our contribution to our life. And now it's for a time. So we give God thanks for the way in which He would have lived, the way in which He would have served, and the way in which He would have been a blessing to each and every one of us. And we give God the thanks for the way in which He has moved up to us. But now God has taken her to Himself so that she can find rest in So it is our prayer that she will continue to rest in peace. That brings me to the second reason that the death of the saints can be happy. And the reason that John gives is that their deeds will follow them. Make no mistake, my brothers and sisters, how we die determines how we have lived. And how we live determines a lot, a lot to see about how we die. How is that so? Because John says our deeds will follow us. One Calypsonian puts it differently, he says, if you do good, Good will follow you. And if you do bad, your journey is hard. Another one says, another one says that evil that men do is going to live after them. The Bible puts it another way. It says, what we reap is what we are going to sow. That is why the writer of the Ecclesiastes exhorts us to cast our bread upon the waters. For after many days, it is going to return to us. The truth is, brothers and sisters, lots of things end in death. A lot of things end when people die. But one of the things that doesn't die with us is our memories. The good times, the good deeds, the good works will linger on in the minds of our loved ones when we have the time. In other words, those who die in the Lord leave a legacy that continues to shine bright in the life of others for years. After they are dead. After they have died, sorry. Death does not bring an end to the loved ones of God. And that is why the writer of the Revelation is able to say, Blessed are those who die in the Lord, because their deeds will follow them. Brothers and sisters, this evening we have heard several persons here commented about the kindness and the generosity of our days. How she gave of her produce and how she was always willing to contribute to the work of the church in whatever she called. She loved her family, and she worked hard to ensure that they had a good foundation. Everyone will agree that Sister Frida was a kind person and that all that she did is evidence of her faith in God. We all acknowledge that the good works don't really save people. But I believe that good works are testimonies of people's faith. That is why James was able to say, Faith without works is dead. Brothers and sisters, I believe that the quality of our rest is turned by the quality of our weakness and our service before God. You see, brothers and sisters, I believe that what people do will always die with them. What we do for ourselves are always going to die with us. But the thing is, what we do for others is always going to live on. Because it will live on as a testimony in the life for our fathers. What Sister Frida did for herself might have gone with her, but what she did for each and every one of us will continue to live on as a testimony of the life that she lived and our witness as a Christian. 
That is why Jesus offers us this words of consolation. He said, do not store up treasures on earth. Store up treasures in heaven. And Paul, in reading to our Christian, in the reading from Corinthians 15, verse 58 says, he says, be immovable, be steadfast, always excelling in the work of the Lord. Why? Because your labor is not in vain. In this context, brothers and sisters, faithful service to God is never a waste of time. I like how one songwriter put it says, if I could help somebody as I walk along, if I could share somebody with a word or a song, if I could help somebody from going wrong, then my living would not be in vain. Sister Frida's living was not in vain because she did not live for herself. She lived to serve others. Brothers and sisters, John says, Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. Yes, is the Spirit. They rest from their labors, for their deeds will follow them. Our dear sister deeds live on to follow her. She has gone, but her deeds are still alive among us this evening. And the way that we keep her alive is when we emulate those deeds that she would have taught us. Those things that Paul and I would have stood for. Brothers and sisters, it is my hope that God will continue to strengthen you. I know that the days ahead without our dear sister will be difficult. The pain will continue to linger for some time. The absence of our physical presence will continue to cause you sorrow. But take comfort in the deeds that mark for life. The deeds of God's people follow them in eternity. The Lord knows our life. God sees our feet. And nothing will go unnoticed or unrewarded by God. And that makes the struggles of life and difficulties that we face, even when we do it, to be born to God. Our dear sister lived a good life. And now we give thanks to God for the life that she lived and for the ways in which she served. May our soul continue to rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
We bless your name for the life of Sister Frida who today laid to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and blessing that her life has brought to others. For her service to her generation according to your will. And for every happy remembrance of our lives. We bless you for your mercy and goodness which have followed her all the days of her life. And now that the trials of this world are over and death itself is past, receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we sing our next hymn, The Lord is My Shepherd. Through the singing of this hymn and all through the good hymns. The Lord is my shepherd, it will be sung to the children of the happy wanderer. The choir of the children.
freedom all. We thank you for the life that she lived and for the way in which she served. We thank you for health and strength and for family and for all the blessings that we enjoy. We thank you for these gifts which we have received in one of her. And we pray that these gifts will be used to be a blessing to others and to build up your kingdom here among us. So bless these gifts as we receive them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me invite us all to stand now for the commandments. Eternal God, who have made us all and did nothing that you have made, and have given us your Son for our redemption, we therefore commend our dear sister, Sister Frida, to your perfect love no, and wisdom. No, no. The love eternal rest grant unto her, and let perpetual life shine upon her. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven.
in the trying times of my Aunt Frida during her sickness and also in her passing. Thanks to the minister and the members of this church. I would like to say thanks to Lapua brothers. I would like to say thanks to all those who participate in here, the lovely choir. What song? I enjoy your song wonderfully. It was good. And also all those who did the, the scripture reading. And everyone who participates, I would like to say thanks. And I do believe that if my Aunt Frida was alive, she would have said the same thing. I would like to say thank you to every one of you. And especially those of us who are here. I know you all take your busy time. Busy time. You all could have been somewhere else. But you all choose to be here to give us support to us. I would like to say thank you to everyone who are present here this afternoon. Even those who couldn't make it. And I know their prayers is with us. So to all, I want to say thank you, and thank you, and thank you.
of the peace of God. Who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of the eternal covenant, they be perfect in every good thing to do his will. Working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. To Jesus Christ, to whom the glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. As the Lord pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so it flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. <laughs> Man, it should be a fair